In this video, I'm going to go over the rewind function in C. So the rewind function allows us to reset a file pointer back to the beginning of the file, which saves us from having to close the file and then reopen it again to read the file again. So here I've got a file, data.txt, with the numbers 1 to 10 in it. And what I'm going to do is open the file, read all the characters in it, and then use rewind to reset the file pointer back to the beginning, and then I'll read them again. So here I'll say file star file, and I've made a file pointer variable. Then to open the file, I'll say file is equal to fopen data.txt and then r. So fopen is going to open the file data.txt for reading. That's what the r means. It's read mode. And it's going to return a file pointer, which is going to be stored into file. Now, if there's a problem opening the file, fopen is going to return null. So we'll just do a quick check for that. We'll say here, if file is equal to null, we know something has gone wrong. So we'll say printf error opening file, and we'll return one. We're going to return one instead of zero, because that's actually a signal to the shell here, to the terminal, that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. So at this point, we'll know that we've actually opened the file successfully, and we can read the characters from it. So here I'll say car C to have a character variable where I can store each character of the file. And then I'm going to use the fgetc function to read each character in the file one at a time. So here I'll say while c is equal to fgetc, and we'll put file here as a file handle, and I'll say while this does not equal eof. So here we're storing each character from the file here one at a time into C. Eventually what's going to happen is we're going to reach the end of the file. And at that point, F get C is going to return EOF, basically a special value that signifies the end of the file. Now you might not have seen this before, but when we store the result here of the function into C, this whole expression here actually has the value of C. That's why we can do this assignment in the while condition here, where we actually do a check here as well to see if the value of this expression does not equal end of file. And so long as it does not equal end of file, we haven't reached the end of the file yet. In that case, we're going to print out the character. We'll say printf percent %c, and we'll output the character c. And then here we'll say printf new line, just to start a new line. So let's actually run this. We'll say here gcc dash o d d dot c to compile. And then we'll run it. And we get the file there. So the only problem is now we're done reading the file. At this point, we typically close the file. And then if we want to read it again, we'd have to reopen it. Rewind saves us from having to do that. So here what I'll say is rewind file. What this does is it sets the file pointer back to the very beginning of the file. So we could then read from the file again. So I'll actually just copy and paste this code here to show you what I mean. So because we're calling a rewind here with the file pointer, the file pointer is going to be reset to the beginning of the file. So when we call fgetc here with that file pointer, it's no longer going to return end of file. Instead, it's going to return the first character in the file. And the next time it gets called, it's going to return the second character, and on and on. So let's actually give this a test now. I'll just delete that because we don't want to actually declare C twice. But we'll compile again here, and then we'll run it. And we see that we print out the file contents a second time. So this is basically what Rewind does. It rewinds the file pointer to the beginning of the file. And this saves us from having to close the file and reopen it again and again. So rewind will be useful in situations where we know we're going to want to read from a file multiple times because it just saves us from having to do multiple closings and reopenings. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.